Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of tech news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. You might also be able to use the GoDaddy coupons that I have if you want to save money on your next purchase. Email me first, chris at perillo.com. I'll send you my latest list. Normally I open packages during a Perillo vlog, but I thought, why not open a package on TLDR for once? Here we go. It's already been opened, but I have no idea what's inside. Oh, that looks interesting. And it's upside down. Oh, okay. I get it now. That's a bit uncommon. It looks as though someone has put my face or series of faces on an iPhone 5 case. I'm kind of happy and creeped out at the same time. Seriously, thanks to whoever made this for me. I do appreciate it. In case you're wondering how to delete your friends on Facebook, we'll show you how. Now, deleting friends doesn't mean that they're actually erased from the planet. <laughs> Too bad that doesn't really work in such a capacity because there are some friends I've had that I wish I could get rid of. An age old question, do I shut down the computer or leave it running? You know what? I say just leave it running. Unless you're not gonna be using it over a 24 hour period, in which case, shut it down. Just seems to me that we're getting to the point where we don't even have to worry about shutting down or starting up. It's just that the devices are always on. Sherlock Slater is considering buying a used MacBook, but how old is too old? To me, the best way to save money with a new-ish computer or a refurb is to buy used, so long as it's slightly used, or at least the product that you're going to buy you know is used, and you're going to use it for certain things that you know the computer can handle. So too old is basically not being able to keep up with what you need it to do. You could use a computer that's five years old and it would still do just as well as a computer that's one years old if that computer that's five years old will still do, still do, still, still do, still do what you want it to do. If you didn't catch the announcement, there has been white smoke emanating from the chimney, which means it's time to buy your tickets for Vlogger Fair. Seriously, I would hope to meet you in person, and I am working on pulling in other tech vloggers who are out there. I just have to get a hold of everybody. Do you guys know who I should be talking to? We're looking for vloggers, vlog viewers, you, the community. And even if you can't make it to Seattle on June 8th and 9th, well, at least you could tell people that you know that it's happening because they would probably appreciate it. I know I would. I received an email the other day from a mother of a child that I met a few years back, and she was very proud of this child, Robert Rosenfeld, who was a once Gnomedexer when I was running the Gnomedex conference for about 10 years. She sent me a link to this article, R. Ventura Boulevard, Top Teens, 10 to Watch. And uh, look at that first photo. Look familiar? I'm actually quite proud of Robert. He's someone who started very early on and I think is going to go on to do great things. We've got a discount on the revolutionary TouchFire iPad keyboard that was originally created in Seattle. In fact, one of the first TLDRs that we uploaded to this channel featured the inventor. You can get that discount at deals.lockernome.com. Supplies are limited. It's like having a physical keyboard on a virtual keyboard, helping with touch typists. Samsung targets Galaxy 4 at Apple's core iPhone market. Apple scoffs. It's not that the Samsung Galaxy S3 is going to suck now, it's just that the new Galaxy S4 is probably going to be a bit better. What's perhaps most interesting, and very few people understand this, is it's more about Samsung versus Apple than it is Android versus iOS, at least as far as the Galaxy series is concerned. Big news in the Android world, Andy Rubin confirms departure. It looks like Sundar, who is currently Google's head of Chrome and Apps, is going to be adding Android to his array of responsibilities as well. Which makes you kind of wonder, is Chrome OS and Chrome and Android going to eventually become the same product? Is this good news or bad news for Android? I guess I'm ambivalent. I think Google's on the right path. I love Google Chrome. It's my default web browser at this point in time. And I'm pointing my hand back here. You can't even see my web browser because the screensaver's going. It's a default screensaver in OS X, I know. Someone asks me about it every single day. Twitter acquires We Are Hunted, Ready's standalone music app. Wow, so now they have Twitter, Vine, We Are Hunted? They're turning into a media company. Doesn't bother me a bit because I have a short attention span. Do you know, and I found this out by meeting with someone at South by Southwest, that the reason that Vine videos are six seconds long is because that's the average time it takes to read a 140 character tweet. Does anybody out there even use Vine? Netflix now has Facebook integration, which means you can share your list of movies and films and videos that you're watching on Netflix with all your Facebook connections. I still don't care. I don't even care what music you listen to either. Honestly, I, I like listening to the music I like listening to. I'll take recommendations, but not really interested in knowing what you're watching, unless, of course, you're telling me, based on my preferences, what you enjoy and that I might also enjoy it. Love those recommendations, actually. If you're looking for a recommendation for me, the new They Might Be Giants album is out, Nanobots. That's a geeky title. And I'm in the liner notes. 
Yes, I know I need to clip my fingernail, but you can see my name right there. I know I showed it a couple weeks ago in a Perilla vlog, but I'm just so darn excited about being in a They Might Be Giants album. Kind of. In the liner notes. Not in an actual song. Another thing that I featured briefly in a Perilla vlog is this. An Allo clip, A 3-in-1 lens enhancement for your smartphone. With this accessory, I've got fisheye, macro, and wide-angle options that can easily slide on my iPhone 5. There's the field of view without the accessory attached. Okay, let's see what it looks like with a wide-angle lens. And dang, that's a wider field of view for certain. Let's go ahead and flip the accessory around since I'm not going to demonstrate the macro capabilities. And fisheye gives you an even... Look, dude, you can even see my hand! If you want your own, I'll put a link to where you can buy one in this video's description. Our question of the day is actually something that I brought up on Twitter when I thought I was going to record TLDR on the day that I was traveling, and unfortunately when I got home I was too tired so I went to bed, so I didn't do a TLDR on Monday. And that is, how was my first experience with Google Glass? That's right, I finally got to see Google Glass in person. In fact, a lot of people at South by Southwest got to see someone wearing Google Glass. Very few actually got to wear one. So here's what happened. I was standing around at the Amazon booth talking to some friends, and up walks someone who's got Google Glass on. Of course, I was enamored. I was like, wow. And so he's doing a demonstration, and I start recording video of him wearing Google Glass, and he's doing all these things. This is just great. I thought, wow, I'll be able to put that into TLDR, or maybe even the vlog, or the combination of the two, because I'm seeing Google Glass, and I can't even say it. I'm so excited. Google Glass in person. I was really that excited, too, because... Everyone seems to be talking about Google Glass, and prescription lenses, by the way, that will incorporate Google Glass are coming in. Yes, I would consider getting Google Glass with my next... Actually, I don't even know the last time I changed my prescription lens. I mean, the lenses have, I think, been the same, but I mean the frame. I haven't upgraded that since 2005. So anyway, uh, I, I turn around, start talking to somebody else, Violet Blue, who is a past Gnome Dexer, and I've done at least two other videos with her in this very channel. And we were talking, and then the guy who was wearing Google Glass taps me very gently on the shoulder. And he says, would you mind not posting that video publicly? And, and I said, sure. You know, I respect, you know, that he does not want me to share the video. But then I started to think, wait a second. A few minutes ago, he was explaining how he was taking pictures and, and video, and he was planning on using those pictures and video privately, but I don't know if he got anybody's permission to do that, and he's walking around South by Southwest, interactive specifically, knowing full well that the entire world of social media has descended upon this series of events to share what's going on. Did he not expect that someone else might have recorded video of him recording video and sharing it publicly without his permission, even though he was walking around taking photos and video of people without their permission? I just thought it was a little odd. I mean, he didn't know me from Adam. I, I didn't introduce myself, really. I probably should have. But either way, I did respect uh, his, his boundaries, his, his privacy. I just found it a little odd. I, I couldn't tell you what I experienced other than telling you that it was kind of frustrating and a little confusing. So I'm not sure what Google's doing. I don't know if they want people to cover it, not cover it, cover it in a certain way or what. But why on God's green freaking earth would you walk around with Google Glass at South by South freaking West and not expect that someone's going to record a video or take a photo of you wearing Google freaking glass? Sorry, sorry, still a little emotional and very confused. I still want Google Glass. I was just a little disappointed with my first experience. Looks nice, but I don't know what Google really wants out of it, considering some of the people wearing it don't want you to know about it. I've gone on record. Society is not as ready for Google Glass as you and I might be. But even if you didn't want Google Glass, we certainly do hope you want to see more of the content we are creating for you. So thanks for liking and sharing this video with all your friends and enemies, too. Probably made a big one in Google there. Not that I meant to. I was really... I was just excited to see Google Glass, and I can't show you that I saw one. So now no one's going to believe me, right? It's just, it's my word against Google's and they're bigger than me. I have a lot more money. We'll see you later.